Hey, what's up guys? I'm Praetorian and welcome back to Strategic Mind, the Pacific. So in the last episode, we knocked out the Battle of the Coral Sea. We got a golden victory, which if I'm not mistaken is the highest possible victory. I got several benefits from that. Uh, so we have uh, for protecting Port Moresby, we get 10% more prestige for the completion of each operation. Uh, we also have some benefits we can take a look at in here. So we have the Grand Cross of the Order of George I, which we looked at uh, in last episode, uh, and it gives us a plus two air defense for the HQ unit. Our HQ unit right now is the um, battleship that we have, the Colorado-class battleship. You can change your HQ unit, by the way, uh, though I think it needs to be on a capital ship. I might be wrong about that, so I think it needs to be either a carrier, a, a battleship, or a heavy cruiser. So that'll be really helpful. I don't know how we got this one. Uh, one plus command point, submarine warfare insignia. I don't know if it's from using our submarines uh, last time. Not entirely sure. So we got some benefits from uh, finishing that, that battle with the Golden Victory. Uh, in this episode, we're gonna be doing the Battle of Midway. Now, as you saw last episode, these uh, scenarios are extremely large with that two hour episode, and they're just gonna keep getting longer, uh, the battles. Uh, so, you know, they're, they're longer anyway, and then you have more core units, more non-core, you know, auxiliary units, under your command, and that's that's more units that need to move and, be, and attack. So, I mean, it could get upwards of like three to four hours per scenario. So, obviously, we are going to need to split these up into multiple videos, and we're going to start that with with this battle here. Uh, so, I'm just going to play for an hour, and wherever we are at at an hour time, maybe I'll finish up a turn or something. But essentially, I'm going for like an hour, uh, somewhere around there, and uh, we'll just kind of break it up. And however many videos it takes to get through the the scenario, that's how many it'll take. Uh, so. Let's jump into it, guys. We're going to start looking at Admiral Nimitz, and we need to get ourselves a new HQ skill. Uh, so I looked through these already, and I feel like, I mean, there's some great ones here. There's a lot of really good bonuses. I always liked the HQ skills from Panzer Strategy. But there's one here for me that is clearly the best one for us to get, and that is this training program one here. Uh, so uh, this is gives all of our uh, all of our units uh, levels them up to, to level one. So they'll all get to pick one upgrade. Uh, so if you look at our, our current units here, uh, none of them have an upgrade. Uh, the little arrow pointing up is is actually, that's an upgrade, excuse me. None of them have a level up. Uh, there'd be a star on them if they could level up, which none of them do. Uh, if you look at their, like if we look at the Colorado class, he's pretty close, 221. And what this, I think this is gonna do is gonna tick him up to 300. So for some of these, they're getting a lot less from it than other ones are. Uh, like he's only getting, you know, yeah, he's only getting 79 experience from that one. I mean, he's getting even less. So not getting much here, uh, but it's a it's a, a level up, guys. That's Those skill uh, ratings are, are really useful. And out of all these things, I feel like that's the most useful one to have. And that's going to apply to new units we get too, which we're going to get a couple of new units before we start the next battle. So yeah, let's go and get the training program. That's just too good to have. It does require like all of your... Uh, all of the victory points we had. So unfortunately, I don't think we can get anything else. If I'm looking here, let me just double check. Uh, there is this one, but yeah, that one would not be all that. It would not be beneficial at all to us in this uh, particular scenario. So let's go ahead and now take a look at the units. Uh, now that we now have upgrades for all of them, so we're gonna have to. You see the little star on here, so we're gonna have to level them all up. And I keep saying upgrades. I mean level up. Uh, so with this one, just kind of dip through here. Kind of briefly looked at these. I didn't really decide what I wanted to get. This one would be great to have, but you know what? This, what it does is it gives a, a shell hole uh, whenever you attack with your main gun, and a shell hole will reduce their defense by one, or and, and it reduces their their maximum movement by by one, I should say, and then that reduces their defense by one, since maximum movement uh, it contributes to defense. It also does one damage to the hole at the end of the turn, so. It is useful to have, that's a pretty good one, but I think we're gonna get this one. Uh, this is a negative one to attack and defense. So it's already, you're getting the defense, you're also getting a negative one to attack, so they're gonna do less damage to you. And and while this one, you know, just does that one damage there, this is gonna apply to every ship that then attacks that, that ship that you applied that to. Every ship that attacks them is gonna uh, take less damage from their attack and, and do more damage from the lesser defense. See, so yeah, I think the overpower is going to be pretty useful, and that's each attack. So if you attack that ship two times, then they'll be at negative two. If you attack them four times, they'll be at negative four. So yeah, it's really good. So we're going to go ahead and get that for our battleship. For the carrier, let's just kind of dip through here. I already know what I'm going to get. Uh, we are going to get some good ones here, but we're going to get Overwatch. 
Uh, yeah, Overwatch is fantastic. So we'll get that there. For the Clemson class, Destroyers here. Man, I really feel like... I feel like we have to get scouting with one of them. So what that does is allow you to move essentially the same way the submarines do, where you get to keep moving as long as you have movement points left, rather than, you know, you, wherever you pick to move, you're, that's your movement. So we're going to get this for the destroyer. I think that'd be really useful to have. Well, this destroyer will get Overwatch. For the submarine, that one's pretty good. So especially because that's how we use our submarine, too, as a forward observer. This one I'm not so sure about. I'd love to know you guys' opinion for those of you guys who are playing it or, or have played uh, the game. Because this seems like it'd be really useful on like a battleship where you know they're really far away and, and the, the biggest range penalties happen when you're four hexes away. Uh, but the submarine attacks from fairly close, so I wonder like how much range defense modifier they're even getting, the, the enemy ship is. Doesn't seem like it'd be that much. I could be wrong. Uh, so let me know what you guys think on that one if you're playing the game. But I, don't, I just don't feel like it'd be that. We're going to go for this one, Forward Observer. Uh, Night Hunter would be great, too. I'm really tempted to get Night Hunter. But we're going to get Forward Observer again, because that's how we, we're using him. And that's 2 plus attack for all of our naval units. Uh, let's go ahead and get something for our fighter. Some of these are familiar to me from when I did the voiceover for the game and, and, then, when, uh, and then from the last game, Panzer Strategy, some of them are from that. Let's get the length of fight, guys. This one is super useful. So I don't think this was in Panzer Strategy. At least I don't remember it in there. I could be wrong. Uh, and, and you always have this dilemma when there's two fighters next to each other where the, one would support the other. So you had to fight both of them, essentially. Uh, and, and so it basically resulted in, in if you either had to like sacrifice a fighter uh, because he's going to take insane amounts of damage or uh, try and kill one of the fighters with an anti-air. Uh, with a lot, you'd obviously need multiple anti-air anti to do that. Or just wait till the fighters like separate from each other. Uh, and so it kind of sucked. Uh, and this right here lets you deal with that. Uh, you won't do any damage to the other fighter, uh, but they lose their ability to support and they receive a negative two to air attack penalty. Uh, it's a negative two air attack penalty for the next turn. Uh, during this turn, it cannot move on its next turn. Okay, so yeah, this is so useful. So yeah, we're gonna get that for fighters. Uh, the dive bomber, the Dauntless dive bomber. So we wanna get for him. A lot of great stuff. I think we're gonna go with the the tactical retreat since he's got to get right over anything. He drops bombs on, so this allows him to get kind of further away, uh, try and get away from some anti-air. And then we have the torpedo bomber, the devastator. And with him, I think we're gonna go with the swift strike so that he can, you know, bomb or drop his torpedoes on uh, enemy ships without taking as much damage from like destroyers providing the support bonus. I think that would be pretty good to get for him. Uh, so that's everything for the level ups. Uh, let's go ahead and go with uh, the upgrades now. Uh, you can see that these guys have the arrow for upgrading. And this is super useful, uh, you know, making your ships better. And it's not too expensive. Well, let me take that back. The destroyers are kind of expensive. I don't think the planes are that expensive. Yeah, the planes are pretty cheap. Uh, you have 40 prestige to get uh, one plus air attack, one plus air defense, one plus ground defense. Yeah, that's not bad at all. Yeah, I'd definitely spend that. So let's go and upgrade the fighter, uh, the Wildcat to the latest model or variant uh, then we have the dauntless he has one as well again pretty useful um, around the same price so we're gonna get that and then the devastator becomes the avenger we upgrade him to an avenger model and that's a little bit more expensive but you can see why uh, we're getting a two plus on the naval attack and a two plus on the air defense so yeah pretty good guys so let's go with the devastator i think that that would be a good good uh, spending of our our prestige so the destroyers you're not getting as much um for the the price really when you look at it but man the air defense that'd be so useful for the destroyers um and then the naval attack as well going up to uh the torpedo defense i mean they already have a really high to torpedo defense as it is but yeah i feel like that's pretty good plus you notice we're getting new guns as well uh we're upgrading from a 102 millimeter L50 Mark 7 to a 127 millimeter L38 Mark 12. Uh, also, our anti-air is changing. I think that's it. That's all I'm seeing here. But yeah, new guns. Um, so, so yeah, I feel like. Does it change their range at all? Let me just take a look here. It doesn't look like that changes the range at all. Okay. So yeah, most definitely. Uh, let me just see here. Looks like it gives a better defense. This uh, The gun that we're getting here has better defense, so it doesn't take as much damage. 
yeah, we're gonna go and upgrade it. I think that's again still use, uh, still useful uh, and worth the price. So after upgrading all our units, we have 2,627 prestige left for purchasing new units and buying equipment. So let's go and start with purchasing new units. Now, the thing about these uh, planes here is you need to have, it tells you right here, the number of deployed aircraft and total carriers capacity. We cannot get any more planes because we don't have the carriers to, to hold them. Uh, so you don't want to get any carriers, you won't be able to deploy them, which is a little bit different than uh, you know, Panzer strategy where, you know, you have the land-based fighters where, you know, land-based planes where you just deploy them around an airbase. And then if, if there's no space around an airbase left because you have too many planes, then you can just wait until, uh, you know, you move the planes on your first turn and then you deploy uh, the next plane. Uh, that's not the case with this one. That means we can have three planes. That's exactly how many we can have, which we already have three planes. So we kind of are stuck if we want to get any, any more planes, which I feel like we have to, uh, then we're kind of stuck having to upgrade our... Our, our capacity here and there's two ways to do that one we can get a new carrier uh, with which would be like the, the Yorktown fleet carrier here the, the larger one uh, allows us to carry three more planes but we'd never be able to after if we bought that with 1680 that would only leave like 900 something prestige left allowing us to get one plane essentially um, yeah or we can get this is like more of an escort carrier maybe a light carrier I don't I don't know it's a light carrier it says right there <laughs> yeah it's a light carrier uh, so it carries two Two planes so it's a little bit cheaper but again still fairly expensive so that's one way to do it to buy a new carrier the other option that we have is to get an enlarged hangar which would allow us to carry one more plane but that's 500 prestige it's not cheap uh, it's expensive but again it might be uh i think it's worth it uh, if you look at uh what you're getting when you when you buy a a new I'm just trying to find, I'm trying to acquire units here. So this here is giving you two for 780. It's only 280 more, um, but it's, it's got low stats. I mean, it doesn't have great stats. I mean, I guess it can at least defend itself um, for only 280 more. I suppose that that would be, the light carrier would not be a bad addition. That would be a, a pretty good choice. But the Yorktown, at this point with what we have right now, I don't think this is a good investment uh, because yeah, we get one more plane and we're not using the other two plane slots right now. So I don't think this would be a good investment and you're getting it for 1680 while 500 you can get just one. So yeah, I think that we have to go with one of those two. Either get the two, which can we even buy two planes uh, if I get this? Let's take a look. Um, we know that we're gonna get a, something for it. So let's go ahead and start by buying our plane and see what the costs are for those. Uh, Cause yeah, I don't actually know. We have to get a fighter. We need to control the skies. There's no point in buying bombers if we can't control the skies. And uh, one Wildcat's not gonna be enough, even with the non-core units that we get. So well, let's get another Wildcat, uh, acquire that. And, uh, and, and again, the new units all have uh, level ups that we'll get to make use of. And so that leaves us with 2,067 prestige left. I also would really like to get an additional submarine. So essentially getting the one submarine and the light carrier would be about 1,500, which only leaves us with like 570 something left, which would be enough to get a Devastator, and that is it. And we can get no equipment. So, not gonna get the light carrier. We know what we're gonna do. Uh, we're gonna, but yeah, then we can't get any more bombers, huh? Good God, yeah. Uh, it just kind of leaves us with, we're just in a, a nasty situation where we can't really get, can't really do much. So uh, what we're going to do here is we're just going to have to live with the planes that we have and, uh, and then on the Yorktown uh, for the equipment to give them the enlarged hangar. Uh, it's just the way it is. So let's give them the enlarged hangar uh, so that we can deploy that new fighter that we got. We'll go ahead and level up this this new fighter as well while I'm thinking about it. Uh, so for the last fighter, we got the Link the Fight. For this fighter, we will get the All Weather. I don't know. Hmm. Let me see here. Also, boom and zoom, which would be great. Yeah, we're gonna get the all weather. I know that it, it rained in the Battle of Midway, so yeah, let's get the, the the all weather. I'm sure there'll be rain at some point. Oops, I didn't mean to close that. There'll be rain at some point, guys. There was rain in the last battle too. So we've got that. That leaves us with uh, 1567. Uh, that's all we got left. Uh, so we can we can carry the four fighter the four planes we have. We can't get any more planes essentially. We can't get a submarine though. So let's go and get that. I think that'd be useful. Uh, that leaves us with 857. Again, no point on getting another uh, plane, and we can't afford. Yeah, can't really afford anything else here. So essentially, we're gonna 
use whatever we have left for equipment. Uh, so let's go and level up the submarine. Uh, we have the forward observer already, so with this submarine, let's get the night hunter. Uh, that's pretty useful tonight. Like I don't know, I don't know if it's every three turns. I don't think it's every two turns. Maybe every three or four turns. It's night, so definitely beneficial uh, to remove half of the attack penalty that you get at nighttime. So we'll get that for that submarine, and then it's just gonna be a matter of getting equipment for our uh, our ships and planes. Uh, so these are pretty expensive. I don't know if we're gonna get any of these right now. We've already got the enlarged hangar here with them supplying so many planes. Good God, I think you have to get him the enlarged storage almost. Because yeah, you're trying to supply four planes. Yeah, we might have to get that. That's 250 prestige though, that's expensive. Uh, we already have the torpedo on one of these guys. Smoke generator would be useful to save the life of a destroyer, try and get him out of there. Uh, that's, that would be useful to have. Uh, we have to get the torpedoes for these guys. Yeah, we definitely gotta get them torpedoes. So that's what we'll start with. Torpedoes for the submarines. Let's see, uh, gotta get the aircraft uh, radar for the fighters so they can find the enemy planes. Uh, and then also be able to see them so that you can do better damage against them. Uh, have, you know, full information about them. So, we could upgrade the torpedoes. Um, this is this doesn't result in more damage, from my understanding. But you'll notice that when we when we fly down to drop the torpedo, uh, our, our torpedo bomber is in a vulnerable position. So therefore, you lose defense. Uh, you take uh, higher um, higher damage from from the ground and from uh, from planes that are attacking. And then you also do less damage when somebody attacks you and you you're defending yourself. Uh, so this essentially reduces those penalties and it's only 20 because we're replacing the torpedoes now we could just add new torpedoes on but the way i look at it like it would be nice it would be great to have poor torpedoes but as far as prestige goes uh, and the limited amount that we have here a lot of times you run out of fuel about the time when you run when you drop two torpedoes any damn way so let's just get this upgraded and it'll only be 20 prestige so we'll upgrade that for the dauntless i would like to get him some type of ammunition uh, these ones here uh, give you more bombs, uh, but you can see that they're substantially more expensive. Quite a bit more expensive, uh, but you know, obviously you have limited equipment slots, so that's the bonus you're getting there. But yeah, I feel like we have to get we have to get one of these cheaper ammunition ones. Uh, so armor piercing would be nice to have. Attempt to get that one. Incinerate bombs would be great to have as well. Let me just see. I think we're gonna go with the incinerate bombs. Yeah, I'm really tempted to do that, uh, and, it, and it's fairly cheap as well. I guess let's take a look and see what happens after we get the enlarged storage, because I feel like we're going to have to get that. Uh, and that leaves us with 287, so not a lot, not a lot of points left. Uh, and then of course could get the smoke generator for these guys, but man, that's pretty expensive uh, for what you're getting there. Yeah, I don't think that's what we're going to do, in fact. Could get uh, the improved optics here for better spotting range. Uh, that would be a hundred prestige, so it's pretty expensive. Is this our guy uh, that we use for? That's the Night Hunter, so we actually want him to have it. I think we will get him that. I'm really going to make use of pretty heavy use of these submarines, guys. So we're going to get the improved optics, and that leaves us 187. We don't have to spend all of it. We're probably going to need some of it, in fact. So what we might do is just get the ammunition type, and then I think we're done. Uh, so we're going to go ahead and go with we're going to go with the armor piercing uh, bombs here. And that's it, guys. Uh, that's all we got. Yeah, that's pretty much all we got. And we could also throw... Let me see here. Fuel would be nice to have. Extra fuel. You know what? Let's have, give him a choice. We have the prestige. Let's. So he has a choice between which kind of bomb he wants to use based on the circumstances. Uh, so that's it. That's all we're going to get. Uh, we're finally ready to get started. We're almost 20 minutes in. Uh, I want to say that we're ready. Yeah, everything looks good. We spent everything we have up there. So uh, what we're going to do is we're going to first listen to Layton because he always has something to say. Um, just like in Panzer strategy where you had your general sitting around, you can click on him and they'll give you a little bit of information about the upcoming battle. Uh, we'll click on him and listen to him and then we're going to watch if there is a cutscene. I haven't actually played this match, guys. I'm kind of going to it blind this time, unlike the last battle where I played it a while ago. I just didn't have time to play it beforehand. Uh, so going into this blind, so I don't know that there's a cutscene, but I assume there's going to be. Uh, I think there's a cutscene in between each... each uh, uh, scenario and uh, I asked you guys last episode whether you wanted to watch the cutscenes or not and there are a couple of you who said that you didn't like them that uh, you know you didn't like the quality of them the, the voice acting and the uh, the animation and stuff uh, so you didn't want to watch them however it did seem that the majority 
uh, did want to watch the cutscenes and enjoyed them, so that's what we're going to be doing, guys. We shouldn't overestimate our first success in the Coral Sea. Our Pacific fleet is still numerically inferior to the Japanese. Apparently, the enemy will soon attempt yet another devastating blow. If I cannot predict the exact time and place of that blow, then all my work will be useless. Fortunately, we have the best cryptanalysts in the world at our disposal. They'll soon finish deciphering the Japanese JN25 code, which is considered impregnable. This will enable us to read all of the enemy radio communications and discover its plans. Gentlemen, I have just come from Washington to discuss with you how to repel the upcoming Japanese attack. Give me your thoughts. Well, we have collectively deducted that the Japanese plan to attack the Midway Atoll, sir. We're actively preparing our defense. Well, listen, if I were you, Admiral, I would not be too hasty in those plans. Our people in Washington are concerned with the possibility of a second attack on Pearl Harbor. I cannot allow the Japanese to disgrace us a second time. Well, things are quite different this time. This time, we managed to get exceptionally precise information about the enemy plans. My intelligence officer will report. Commander. Please, ha have a look at our latest radio intercepts of the Japanese fleet's communications, sir. Oh my. <laughs> if you've not seen this intel in your dreams, Leighton, then I'll wager that you know more about the movements of the Japanese fleet than Admiral Yamamoto himself. You're one lucky devil, Nimitz, that is for sure. Well, sir, luck comes to only those who are ready to accept it. One has to know how not to miss it. <clears throat> My headquarters has already devised our response to the Japanese, sir. We're ready to implement it. Well then, I would say get on with it, Admiral. From Admiral King to Admiral Nimitz. We have just received the latest intelligence reports on the Imperial Japanese fleet. The first air fleet under the command of Admiral Nagumo the first fleet with battleships under the command of Admiral Yamamoto and the second fleet with landing forces have all left their respective bases. If the information from the OP-20G is sound, then all of these forces are heading towards Midway. Get ready to give them a warm welcome. In the upcoming battle, you have two main objectives to accomplish. The first one is to hold the Midway Islands, Sand and Eastern. The second one is to counter-attack the Japanese fleet approaching Midway, sinking all of its carriers. Without them, the enemy will not be able to continue the offensive. We received a message from the Aleutian Islands regarding the Japanese invasion. Islands Atu and Kiska have already been taken. We expect the enemy forces to attack our naval base in Dutch Harbour on Unalaska Island. Apparently Japanese activity in a less important area is a clever ruse to distract our forces from Midway. Nonetheless, the Aleutian Islands are deemed United States territory and it is our duty to defend it. If the circumstances allow, then support our forces in and destroy the Japanese troops on islands Kisk and Atu. Remember, Midway is the last bulwark guarding Hawaii. The US Navy cannot allow enemy forces to set foot on American soil. The Japanese may have a larger force, but I am deeply convinced we can stop them at Midway and from that point on, drive them away from our territory. Sir. The Japanese fleet was detected southwest of Kure Atoll. I assume it confirms the radio intercept data. Is this the main force? It's unclear, sir. Additional reconnaissance of the area is required. Conduct reconnaissance if necessary. Admiral Fletcher, sound the alarm. We have an Imperial fleet visit. Let us give them an extraordinary reception. Alright, we're finally into the battle and we're almost halfway through the episode. It's just 
just the nature of it, guys, uh, unfortunately. But yeah, let's go ahead and start getting our units deployed. We should probably start out by taking a look at what we have for non-core auxiliary units. We have a lot of a lot of ships, a lot of uh, planes. All right, that's good to see. There's a lot more than I was expecting us to have. And I'm noticing a little star on here. Now, I wonder, is was this uh, always going to be the case? We were always going to have a level up for all these units? Uh, or is it because I got that, that uh, HQ skill? Because if that's the case, that it applies to all of your, your auxiliary non-core units as well, then, man, that's even more powerful than I thought it was. Unfortunately, that doesn't mean that we need to upgrade all of these uh, these ships and planes and troops and stuff, though. So, yeah, that's going to take even more time. Uh, but, yeah, let's go ahead and get started, guys. We have two north Ham We're going we're gonna to start out by looking at what we have first, and then I can kind of decide what we uh, need for upgrades. So we have two Northampton uh, heavy cruisers. So one's right there, one's right here. We have two Yorktown carriers and yeah, they're right next to each other over here as well uh we have four clemson class destroyers uh where the hell's this okay so this is the the northern attack that they have here where they're trying to attack uh, our island here on uh, dutch harbor and we have a secondary objective of clearing a two and kiska islands here Ooh, that's going to be kind of challenging to do. The, that's, and that's a secondary objective. Our main objectives are to hold you know, midway and, and destroy the four enemy carriers. Okay, so yeah, this one's going to be a little bit hard to do. Uh, the Dutch Harbor uh, needs to be defended, and it's six ships. Now, we learned from the last episode that that includes uh, the, uh, the convoys as well as uh, any surface ships or even submarines. Uh, so these destroyers aren't going to be able to, be able to do it alone. So we're going to need to give them some assistance. Uh, we'll try and give them something to help them out. Because uh, that's all I'm seeing up here is these two destroyers. Yeah, that's it. And then, of course, we have the, the one infantry unit or marine. It's good for assaulting the enemy positions after the artillery and air bombardment. It is also the best unit for storming cities, mountains, forests, and well-entrenched positions. A well-entrenched infantry is a tough target for the enemy assault. I figured I'd let Praetorian talk a little bit here because somebody said they couldn't hear, hear my voiceover. And I, I turned up the the uh, voice a little bit i don't know let me know how it sounds guys i turned up the voice a little bit and turned down the uh, sound effects from like battle and stuff and uh hopefully it's a little bit better uh, we'll see uh, and i'll probably still turn those up in the uh in the editing as well so yeah we have some marines here we keep the enemy and some anti-air okay and then i'm guessing the other two marines yeah are down here and the other two anti-air are here as well Okay, so we know what we have, uh, except for our Air Force, I haven't looked at that yet. Oh, and our submarines, we have three submarines, okay, nice. Alright, that's going to be super helpful. Uh, and then we have uh, for our Air Force. So it looks like these green ones, yeah, these green ones are our land base uh, planes. Because uh, yeah, we got the P-40 and the B-26 tactical bomber, so yeah, that's the fighter and there's the bomber. So these are our land base ones, that means I can't land on carriers. They'll have to use these air bases here. Uh, so we also have two Wildcats. They are the older uh, models, older variants of, of Wildcats. Same here with the two Dauntless, and then we have the Devastator uh, torpedo bombers as well. Okay, so it's a pretty good force that they set us up with, but I'm, um, I imagine that the enemy force is going to be massive. He did say that there's three, three enemy fleets uh, coming, so yeah, I expect that this is we're probably way outnumbered. Uh, as you would expect. So let's go and start upgrading these guys because yeah, we need to get this done, get it started. Let's get playing. Uh, so we have the two Northamptons here. Uh, let's go and see what we want to get them. So this one up here, uh, let's see what we want to get him. So I'm thinking, I think we should get one, get task force for one of them and then rip the hole for the other one. We'll get the task force for this one up here. Yeah, so we'll get task force. That'll give a bonus to any other ships that are within three hex range of them. That'd be pretty useful to have, I feel. Yo, ho, ho, uh, he'll probably be up on the front line doing battle with uh, enemy battleships and destroyers and stuff. We have the Northampton down here. And let's get him... We'll get him to rip the whole one. And you let's see. We got the Yorktown carriers, carriers here. They're both down here. So let's gonna get those guys upgraded as well. We'll probably get... I'm really considering getting Overwatch for uh, both of them. I'm just seeing if there's anything else that we'd really want here. I mean, this task force would be useful as well. Getting task force for another one of them, I suppose. Um, yeah, I suppose that would be useful for them to have. 
But I think we're going to do Overwatch. Yeah, I think we're going to do Overwatch for, for both of them. Again, Overwatch is just so useful, man. So let's go ahead and get that. Uh, the Clemson class destroyers. So where are these one? So these two are up here, while the other two are down here. Let's go ahead and get. You know, we'll do these two first. Uh, these guys are gonna be not quite on the lonesome, but they're gonna be pretty alone. So getting. Um, let's see what we would want to get for these guys. Uh, there's the defender trait. Uh, they're scouting. There's night hunter as well. Uh, again, Overwatch would be useful for one of them. And observer. We we want them to be able to spot because. I'm probably not going to give them any carrier support up here. So, yeah, spotting range would be useful for one of them. So let's get spotting range for one. And then for the other one, we'll get him Overwatch. I don't know if there's going to be any carriers, any planes up here. So having that would be useful. Now down here, so these destroyers here. Uh, let's go ahead and get these guys uh, upgraded. Let's see what we want to get. I want to get scouting for one of them. And then, like... Overwatch for the other one or even defender for the other one. That'd be useful to have too Frankly, yeah, I kind of feel like Yeah, this is what we're gonna do. We're gonna do defender for this guy here and then scouting for the other destroyer down here And Scouting Okay uh, so now we have submarines. We have three submarines. Let's take a look where they're all at. Alright, so he's like, he's still pretty far away. Can we deploy close here? I don't actually know. Let's take a look and see where we can deploy, guys. This would be really good to know. Alright, we can deploy pretty close there. So we'll just put one of our two submarines up there since he'll be much closer. Because I think I'm going to give him submarine support because I'm not giving him the battleship, not giving him the carrier, and, and there's no, they already have destroyers. So but frankly, that's all there is to give him. We'll give him a submarine. So all these submarines are going to be helping us down here. Uh, and it is raining, by the way, which, remember, we get that camouflage and it's a 33% attack penalty. So it's good that for some of those, for those planes, we did get the uh, that bonus that reduces that. So it's only like a 16% or 16.5% technically uh, penalty that we're getting to our attack. All right, so with the first submarine here, I guess he's the closest, so he's going to be like, you know, a forward observer, I suppose, and it wouldn't hurt to get another forward observer trait. Yeah, let's go ahead and do that. Let's get another forward observer trait. Uh, this guy here. I'm, I'm thinking that I'm going to get Torpedo Expert for one of these guys. I would like to... Gains 4 plus naval defense. Okay. Uh, but yeah, I'd like to, to test it out and see and see if it does result in doing more damage. So we're going to get the Night Hunter for this one. And then for this guy here, we will get the Torpedo Expert. We'll test it out and see if, it, if we notice that it's doing any more extra damage. The aircraft unit is a powerful and versatile weapon. Its main purpose is to protect your forces from enemy aircraft by overwatch, fire support, and direct attack of the enemy. However, it can also effectively combat ground units. Large caliber anti-aircraft artillery is a good weapon for destroying enemy tanks. All right. I'm trying to tell you all about anti-air. Uh, so we're going to get the, the deadly one. Yeah, I think that'd be useful for this one. I imagine we'll get attacked here first, and then here if they take it. So with this one here, we're going to want to give him range. I mean, I don't even know if that'll be, probably won't be enough for him to even help out, but maybe if we moved him here, then he would be able to help us there. I don't know. Some crazy fuckheads can't fly in our skies. And with this guy, let's give him Veteran of the Trenches. Yeah, get a little bit of entrenchment there. All right, so we got our Marines now. We gotta get them some upgrades. Uh, so we're gonna start with the Marine that's here. Let's see what we wanna get him. Remember, he's gonna be the one that's gonna be deep in it, in the thick of it. A lot of these are, a lot of these are for the attack. Uh, this wouldn't help, I think. I know it wouldn't help either of those two Marines. I have to look at the other one, because yeah, they're in clear terrain. And so we're not even getting bonus from terrain, so that wouldn't be useful for these guys. So I think we're going to do Forward Observer here. Yeah, uh, he'll provide a bonus to anybody that's uh, around here, just in case we don't have any of our other Forward Observer ships to do it. Uh, so we'll get that for him. Uh, for the Marine that is here, really there's not much here uh, to get, except for the Veteran of the, the Trenches, so that's what we'll get. And then with this guy, I need to look at his... Come on, move over to him. He is just in clear terrain too. You can move him in a mountain, but we have to protect 
Yeah, we should probably protect these two things here, so yeah, there's really no point on getting that one for him either, the uh, the train one. So veteran of the trenches would probably be the last one to to get him. Yeah, entrenchment would be really useful, especially if we have like enemy ships that are bombarding him we and stuff. Uh, that entrenchment's gonna help save his life. All right, so let's go to get their planes uh, upgraded now. Get his, uh, some good stuff for him. So the P-40, what do we wanna get for the P-40? I feel like we should get the all fighter. The P-40 is gonna have, yeah, the P-40 has better stats uh, than the Wildcats do. So making sure that his stats are, are, you know, good in this first turn here when it's raining and any subsequent turns where it's raining would be useful. So make sure he's our he's our best guy, uh, best fighter. Well, I don't know how he compares to our, our current fighter. Probably, I think our current fighter is, yeah, still not as good as him. I think his attack is 11. But yeah, you notice, uh, yeah, he's no longer getting that penalty because of the rain. Uh, so let's go to get the Wildcats upgraded now. See what we want to get them. I, I feel like we need to get another Link to Fight one. Link to Fight one. So we don't. it's not just uh, one R1 fighter that can do that for us. And then we can do the Defender would be useful to have. But you know what? Let's do All Weather just, again, because it's raining. Uh, so our B26. Let's get him uh, upgraded. So we want to get him. Uh, all weather would be useful. I, found, I kind of feel like we should do tactical retreat for him, though. Yeah, let's do tactical retreat. Make sure we can get him away after he does those. Uh, after he does his bombing run. Uh, they look like they actually have some equipment here, don't they? They all have aircraft radar that, radar that I'm seeing. Yeah, the fighters all have aircraft radar. Excellent. Uh, the B-26 also have has aircraft radar. And then the Dauntless has incendiary bombs and aircraft radar. And he has armor-piercing bombs in aircraft radar. Okay, excellent. So we have one with each type of ammunition. So it's good to know. So with our incendiary bombs, what do we want to get here with this guy? So these are the t yeah, these are the dive bombers. So getting one with the all-weather trait would be useful. We did get one guy that already has that though. Getting to a strike would be useful too. Would take as much damage. Uh, and then there's the tactical retreat be nice to have as well all right so let's get tactical retreat for one of them and then all weather for the other one the skies are calling. and then with the devastators the let's go ahead and get let's take a look here um swift strike for one of them let's pray for good and weather. tactical retreat for the other all trying to save these guys so they stick around longer in the battles and that's it we have leveled them all up finally <laughs> Now we need to deploy all of our ships. This should be fairly quick. There's only a couple places to deploy to. Uh, so let's get battleship over here, carrier, and destroyers, uh, and then a submarine. Uh, which submarine are we putting over here, though? Let's take a look. Uh, I guess you can see him here. He's the Night Hunter, and he's the Ford Observer. So the Ford Observer has to be uh, here. This is where I want him. So he'll go here, and then our Night Hunter will go up here to help those destroyers out, and that's pretty much all we're given to them. We know that there's going to be some troop convoys here, so the, that submarine would be really good at, at trying to sink those troop convoys. That's, the, that's what I'm thinking. That's my, my mindset here. So let's go and get all of our planes uh, positioned over here. Uh, now, you may notice you know, that we do have those, those uh, non-core uh, carriers here. So even if we had added additional planes, though, we would not have been able to put them there. You'll notice here that you have a higher capacity or whatever, but I think you still can't deploy them there. Uh, I don't think it would be possible to uh, to deploy them at all, despite that. Looks like they're full any damn way. Yeah, they're both full. We unless the they have... Nah, they don't have anything here. It's interesting... That, oh, okay. The reason why it's it's uh, doesn't then register here is because... Mobile airfield at your disposal. Oh, what the hell? I'm trying to deploy here. Uh, it, it's not registering here because we haven't we haven't put these four into the battle yet. Let's go and get them placed. Sometimes it can be a little bit of pain to put them above because you accidentally pull them out. And I think we are done. Yeah, we've deployed everybody. Let's enter deployment, and we are in the battle of midway, guys. Uh, it's <laughs> two thirds of the way through the episode, and just now getting into it. Uh, but that's okay, guys. It's just how it is. So let's go ahead and get started. Uh, they want us to start out by doing conducting air reconnaissance over here, so that's exactly what we're going to do. And we could send a plane over here, but we won't. We're going to do the aviation recon. And maybe like this. Verifying the enemy's yeah, they are. Sir, we have spotted the enemy landing force ships. 
All right, so we got, we got some prestige from that. Nice. So don't know what that is. Uh, these are three transport, or excuse me, two transport and a destroyer. A bunch of transport over here and two destroyers. Okay, um, so they do the have protection against game. our submarines. Yes. So we need Jesus. to take that into consideration and try and go around them. Uh, we'll so we're gonna go up this way. Here. Oh, there's planes. Okay. Maybe we can. Is... Lots hey, of planes. Too deep here. When we drown, are we going home? Okay, so quite a few planes here. I'm gonna so use these guys to try and see if they can't figure out who's here. Oh, there's even more. And right, just kind of move hey, under them noticed me. to try and figure My out will be proud. what we've got here. Are we going home? Looks like that's it. Oh, trying to click on. Unseen for the enemy. So we've identified a few of them. We know that we have dive bombers here. Um, okay, so there's only one zero, one fighter, and then uh, the rest are all dive bombers. So they're here to attack the islands. Uh, so they're going after Midway. So we've got to, uh, we're gonna have to deal with them. Uh, so let's go ahead and get these guys moving down. Home? Go awesome, you know, come down here and help us sink those uh, troop convoys. They're coming. All right, so we've got the, the submarines moved. Uh, the initial submarines, I guess we gotta move uh, these guys as well. This is our main submarine here. Yes, it is us. Now let's go ahead and take care of the situation up here first because it's a little bit easier. So, I think it said they're on that mountain right there or something like that, so that's where we're gonna start heading to. Guarding the perimeter. Conducting active search for enemies. I don't know which one's the he's the observant. Okay. You still can't see over there just yet. It is raining, so it does reduce the visibility a little bit. So we move those guys, and then we're gonna get the submarine heading on over there as well. So what I'm thinking is that they can they can bombard here. But frankly, we we need to find where those troops are coming. I assume they gotta be coming from Yeah, they can't be coming from there. Probably from right here. So they'd be selling from across here, maybe up on the north here. So yeah, we gotta find those guys wherever they're at. Uh, the six ships that are here. All right, so let's go ahead and continue moving our ships uh, and our planes as well. Uh, so let's see how we want to do this. We we know we want to take those guys out. Uh, so let's go ahead and start with with fighters. Uh, yeah, try and take out as many of these as you can. I don't know how many can reach. Perhaps none of them. Uh, well, we can move the carriers, so we can reach them. We should be able to reach them with our wildcats. We are higher. Yeah. Once we move the carriers, uh, we should be able to to reach them. So we do have to get the carriers moving. All right. So let's go ahead and get all the rest of these ships moving as well. Uh, we'll lead the way with the battleship here. Get our destroyer going as well. Which one of these is which? I don't actually know here. Uh, so this is that's the scouting one. Oops. Shit. Didn't mean to do that. And this is the the night hunter. Or excuse me, no, he's got the Overwatch. Your trust so yeah, he should be able to move like one at a time or whatever. For enemy all right, so it doesn't matter for right now. We're just gonna be moving them all forward at this point. We move the carrier as well. We're on all right, so fortress. let's go ahead and get the heavy cruiser moving over here. Although we'll probably lead the way with the destroyer. That'd probably be the best way to do this. I don't know if they have submarines, so let's make use of our sonar as we move with those destroyers, because, yeah, I have no idea what we're getting ourselves into right now, guys. All right, so let's get the heavy cruiser moving forward. He's going to help us sink those convoys. And we're going to bring a carrier over there as well. Uh, so we'll bring, we'll just bring this carrier that way. This is the way to go. While the other carrier comes around this way. Going the extra mile to carry to help us sink those planes. Uh, or excuse me, uh, shoot down those planes. We got another uh, heavy cruiser, uh, so let's go ahead and hit him moving as far as, far as he can go. And we have another destroyer, uh, which we probably should move down this way. Now, I feel like we should move a destroyer up this way. Searching for enemy subs. All right. So I think all of our ships have moved. Yeah, all the ships have moved. So now it's just a matter of uh, getting our aircraft into the fight. So again, we can't get them fighting just yet. And I don't think I'm gonna attempt to even fly out here because uh, I don't know where they're gonna go to. So, you know, let's just fly over to, this is an airbase right here. Uh, so yeah, we'll just fly over to this airbase. Yeah, this it's fine. And then uh, Speed is we'll even land sense. so that we refill our uh, that plane 
and then just put him back out uh, for the next turn. With blinding speed. So there we go. And he'll cover here. Um, we also might Ready want to action. get... We might, in fact, want to move these guys. Hmm. I guess it's fine. If they get troops over here, then we'll want to put somebody there so they have to actually fight somebody here. Let's see if they even get over here. I don't even know if they will. However, I, I think I will... Uh, Ready for action. Move these guys onto the victory point on this side of things. Uh, you know what? It's fine. We'll leave them as is. We're not going to move anybody. It's okay. All right. Uh, so let's go and continue with our planes. Our now the, the Wildcats should be able to start attacking over here. Uh, so we're going to want to make use of the, the non-core uh, Wildcats first. We live Although, they, of course, our Wildcats would have uh, better performance against them, but we can't even see them, for Christ's sakes. Yeah, we can't even see the fighters, which is unfortunate. We kind of, I feel like we almost are going to need to. Well, if we get close enough, maybe it will, uh, uh, we have yeah, maybe we won't need to do that. Yeah, let's move Consider one in and see if, there. okay, we can see him now. So, not good odds. We live to fly. Uh, this Wildcat cannot reach. He's a little bit too far away. Okay, um, let me take a look at my guys. Yeah, they, even they don't have fantastic odds. What we could do is use the afterburners, which gives you more move, move points, it uses some of your fuel, but it increases all your defenses. Uh, so that's exactly what we'll, we'll do. Uh, but first, let's go and move some of the, more of these planes over here uh, so that we can, we can do an attack here. So we'll move, let me just take a look. I, I, I can't remember what each of these guys. He has the length of fight. We don't actually need to use that right now. And then he has the all weather, which would mean he's gonna do the, the best against him. So let's move him in right here. And we will start the attack with the afterburner to increase our defenses. And there you go, much better odds now. Let's start the battle against this zero. See if we can't knock his ass out of the sky. We have trouble hearing your orders. At uh, we'll this use altitude. the afterburner here as well, and now much better odds. As in Hellcat. Not going to destroy him yet, but we Our can now knock him out with this last Wildcat, altitude. which means we weren't able to do any damage to their to their bombers, unfortunately. But that's okay. Uh, uh, was that a barrel roll? And I'm not going to use afterburner. I think you should be able to do it without it. As in Remember that does use fuel. There we Enemy go. Down. Excellent. So we destroyed the fighter. And unfortunately are not able to uh We had been pilots before not able to attack any of the bombers right now. That's kind of a bummer. I'm not even gonna bother moving them out right now because I just assume the bombers are coming over here. Uh, so we won't even bother moving the fighter out. There's no point. Uh, let's take a look at you know what, there's probably no point on moving anybody. We can't if we can't reach them. Um except for him. It would be wise to move him since he can't land on the carriers. But yeah, the carriers are going to get closer, or slightly closer anyway. We're not going to be able to reach them. Um, I don't think anyway. I guess we'll take a look I and see if anybody can reach. Yeah, you and they're going to move anyway. They're going to move within our forces? range. Uh, the the next turn, they're pretty close to our range. And with our carriers moving, it's yeah, the, they'll be in with, within range, I think. So I don't think there's any point in moving these guys out right now. Uh, I think instead, let's just move the, the B-26 and the do the same thing as what forces, we did here with the, the, the fighter. Uh, so move him in, land him, and then have him take off again. You and he'll be supported trust. by the fighter as well, as well as the anti-air, if another fighter happens to attack him. And then I think that's going to be it. Um, since we can't, I'll double check again real quick to see if any of our bombers can, can reach, but I'm pretty sure that none of them can. Yeah, so there's no reason to even attempt to. All right, so I think that's the end of the turn, if I'm not mistaken. Let's just go through and make sure we did everything we wanted to do. Yeah, because nobody can attack those guys just yet. Yeah, we're good to go. So let's go to end our turn. We have 12 turns if we don't want to start losing uh, victory points. That's not a lot of turns. Uh, based on what it sounds like, four carriers. We have to destroy four carriers. So it's their turn now. And, yep, there's our overwatch caught him, ambushed him, he didn't, and it was ambushed because he didn't know we were there. So that's additional damage. Got another plane coming in here, and it looks like yeah, they're moving all their bombers, exactly what we thought they were going to do. They're going to move over here and start bombing midway. So we're going to have to make use of our planes. And Don't tell me they're actually going to bomb the anti-air. There is a bonus uh, or a level up uh, trait, whatever you want to call it, skill. 
that allows you to okay so he's gonna bomb here the Marines and the anti-air did not provide support unfortunately the fighters provide support here though as they attempt to bomb the anti-air which should fire back on their ass right maybe not maybe because he fired already he's not doing too well now but yeah there is the skill though that allows you to to attack anti-air first when you attack them so you can try and do the damage to them so they can't do as much damage to you. Maybe even destroy them if they're weak enough. I don't know what they're doing. You have no idea what they're they're doing here. I think he's opened that up so he can use one of one of his bombers on that anti-air, but yeah, he uh doesn't have any that can land there. Maybe this one's coming. Nope. They've got a lot of planes. That is a lot of bombers, guys. Not a lot of fighters so far. We only saw the one fighter. I assume that one of those four over there has got to be a fighter, right? But yeah, so far it's a... Uh, why is it not like... I can't even see what you know, what they're doing. Must be uh, ships we can't see and stuff. Uh, but yeah, this is uh, another one there, I think, as well. This is a huge air force that we're going to have to deal with. Uh, I think their air force outnumbers us. It was a good thing that we got that fighter, guys. Yeah, that was a... Yeah, I'm very pleased that we got that extra fighter now with all those planes. Now, we do have anti-air, uh, so that should let us uh, take out some of those planes. And so all these guys here are going to move. Not really wanting to sit through it, so we're just going to click through Sir, it. And there we go. A large group of Japanese battleships are closing in on us from the northwest. Thanks for the warning, Layden. Fletcher, get ready to deal with a battleship attack. I advise you to make sure our carriers are safe. We cannot let the enemy battleships to get within striking distance of them. From the northwest. So, is it the northwest of Midway here? So, like up here? Yeah, looks like they're approaching up that way. Okay, that's, that's been my guess. They're going to come from here. Alright, guys, so battleships. Battleships are coming. Um, but that should let us have a little bit of free time here uh, destroying enemy Yo -ho -ho and a bottle of rum. enemy convoys uh, so let's go ahead and move our seaplane out and I'm gonna try and identify these guys because uh, I have no idea where they moved to uh, maybe somewhere right around here there we go all right uh, so here's the destroyers there's the convoys let's go ahead and focus our submarines on day. destroying convoys like a huge fishy. So there we go, and then we're gonna want to take Are off. Going home? Get out of there, so the destroyer, I don't know if he'll come over here and try and sink us. If he does, then that's you can fine. See us. All right, and then with this uh, submarine, we will go, why do they always go weird? Make weird movements here. You trying to stay well, away from the destroyer? Hero. I don't know what he's yes, trying to do. Didn't seem like it was the most efficient way of moving though. Will I become a hero? All right, so let's yes, go ahead and shoot him and then once again, back out of here though, he might be able to identify him. Uh, if he comes over here, yeah, I mean, he just needs to move one and then he'll be able to use his US sonar on us. Are bested only by US go ahead and move these submarines in. And good God, that's a lot of planes. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 12. That's a lot guys. All right. Guarding bigger vessels. So let's go ahead and start with dealing with the plane situation here, guys. Yeah, let's let's start with that. So we have an anti-air who can fire on one of these guys. Uh, remember, we have our fighters as well. We have a total of four or five fighters, I think five fighters, that can do some attacks here. Uh, we need to identify the planes that are located here. So let's go ahead and start with that uh, by moving are the, fastest ship. the destroyer that can... That's the Night Hunter. Oh, that's the scouting. Never mind. Excuse me. We don't have a 900 destroyer. So moving the destroyer that can keep you. moving. Searching for enemy subs. And he will identify all these fighters for us. Though I don't really want to get within range of him just yet. I want to focus on Conducting active helping for out against subs. these bombers Conducting that will tear our troops subs. up. All right. So he's identified almost all of them. Um, but not the one I really needed to identify here, uh, which is the zero. All right, so that's a shame. We might need to have somebody else come on over here first before we start attacking, like this destroyer here. Uh, actually, what we should do is have the ones that have the, the small, the, the low range anti-aircraft guns. They should move right here so that they can fire, 
fire on them. And can he fire on? He cannot. All right, so we're gonna move Why him over he here. Headed? I know we're like going right underneath <laughs> them, but it's okay, guys. We can now see the zero, and they do have two zeros here. Uh, so we have to get the fighters dealt with first. So that's where we're gonna be focusing our fire. We're gonna need to make sure that we have a destroyer next to him, which we do have a destroyer next to him. So he'll provide any support for the battleship if they happen to try and bomb them. These are all, let me just take a look here. I'm trying to, I think, okay. So they do, there are some torpedo bombers here. All right, good to know. I know I just put my battleship right underneath them, but the idea is that hopefully they're gonna be, there's not gonna be much there um, soon. Let's get the submarine moving in. We're gonna try and do as much damage to them as possible with our anti-air and our, uh, is there anything better and this guy fire on him. On he cannot battleship. quite fire on him. All right, but we are going to move all so. the way over here with you can expect the heavy cruiser. Just get these guys moved first, so I know where everybody's going to be at. Our world is full of wonders. Carriers are one of them. This carrier will go right here. Yes, sir. Again, I'm trying to make sure that we can use the uh, anti-airs that only have a range of one, meaning they can only fire right next to them. So we want to make sure that we can use those. Instrument of modern warfare. I don't think the battleships are going to be here soon, I would assume, hopefully. Uh, so the destroyer needs to protect these guys, so we need one destroyer next to each of these. So I'll move this one here and this one here. Because the destroyers do not have anti-air that needs to be next to them. Uh, they have a range of two for their anti-air. All right, so let's go and get started uh, with trying to destroy these fighters. That's what we're going to work on first. You don't need All right, so we're going to use carriers. the uh, anti-air that can we're only fire next to them. That's how we'll start this out. We better be kept away from the enemy. We're on trying to do as much damage to the fighters first. Go trying to take those out so that we can wreak havoc on those bombers. So I think this is the only plane that he can hit. So he's going to use... Both of his anti-air on him. We're, he's down to three now. We're doing pretty good, guys. Not too shabby. Uh, so this guy with his anti-air. Yeah, he can only hit. Oh, wait a minute. He actually has these as well. So he can actually fire on a couple different planes. Okay, interesting. So yeah, we could uh, could fire multiple planes there. We reach for the stars. All right. So I guess let's work on the 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 fighters here. Uh, we'll with carry you through this battle. Let me Your just take a look here. Well yeah, let's use him. No, no, no. We have an island on board, sir. I think we can destroy this. Maybe we not. Prefer to keep our distance. I'm trying to get the experience. You get extra we'll experience for battle. destroying planes. We so have an island on board, sir. I want we'll that going to fight, my sir. my core units. We aim for the sky. Can we just stay away and launch I don't planes? think we're gonna get him. Ah, so close. A lot of non-lethal damage that he'll be able to repair. Um Reporting as ordered. He can't fire on him. All these fancy new All right, so that's a shame. Uh, he can only fire on the planes that are right next to him or over top of him. Probably should start on the one that's right over top of him because that is a torpedo bomber. Do a bit of damage to him. And yeah, I really want that guy destroyed there, and I prefer to use anti-air to do it. Do we use all of our anti-air with the fighters we or with the uh, carriers we did? All right. So let's start with this here. Let's see if he can't get that destroyed. Oh, I wanted to use the core unit, my bad. Ah, whatever, it's fine, it's fine. All right, so let's start working on the other fighter. And I can't click this unit here. Try to do as much damage again to him as we can. All right. Not too bad, I suppose. Uh, he's pretty weak. We cannot fire on anybody, so we can go ahead and use it with our big guns. We're just not close enough. We're so. right out of range, unfortunately. So we can go ahead and use uh, four shots, essentially. Uh, so this one has to be the, the nearby units here. So we'll use it on him. That ship is about to disappear. Do a little Finally, bit of damage to him. We get to use our guns. And then with the bigger gun, we're gonna use that on oh, the, as our dual purpose gun. gun. We'll use it on the fighter. All right, that's not looking too shabby, guys. Uh, not too bad at all. All right, so just taking a look at what's left over here. We'll start moving it through this way. Uh, so yeah, we have our destroyers, so we can we can see what's here. 
and we're gonna go ahead and make use of our heavy cruisers let's see here how would be the best way to do this I'd love to fire on him where he can't fire back uh, I think that'd be the best way to do this here yeah, if we use this one here we'd have to get fairly close even to fire back on us though I don't know that he can penetrate us yeah he might not be able to penetrate us and does this have any effect? I don't think this has any effect because I don't think he has very significant armor. Let me just double check on this one. Pretty sure we can see his armor somewhere on here. Maybe not. Where do you see armor? Air defense. Here it is, armor deck. So okay, it's not up here, it's up here. So yeah, he doesn't have an armor deck. So in that case, it's not useful to use the armor piercing. So yeah, I think what we should do is uh, fire on him where he can't fire back, uh, but also get it where we can use this gun here on these. So we need to be five range from the destroyer and four range from the convoy. Uh, so would be one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four, five, yes. So right there you can expect would be the best way to do this. So this will allow us to fire on him and he can't fire back. And remember, we do shell holes to him as well. So he's at eight, but he's got two shell holes. And then we'll use this gun here. Let's see oh, shit, I didn't realize that was a destroyer. Caliber. My bad. That allowed him to shoot the torpedo out of shit. I, had, I did not realize that was a destroyer, guys. My bad. I thought that was one of those. Or I didn't see him or something. Yeah, I must not have saw him. Yeah, I completely ignored him. Whoops. All right, so that's unfortunate. That's not the way I wanted to do that. All right, well... I guess we better move him in to try and help out, take care of this. Although, yeah, we don't want to use the torpedo on him. That would not be the best way to do this. He would not do very good against him. Interesting. Yeah, man, I wish I hadn't done that. Uh, yeah, that's not. that was not a good way to do this. Shit. All right, that sucks. All right, what is what is? Let's go and start firing on him. Air cover. And then with him, we'll, we'll keep on firing on these destroyers, trying to get them sunk. I mean, he won't get sunk, but you know what I mean. Do as much damage to his guns as possible. Uh, so we, he can't use his depth charges. His engine is in a bad place. Anti-air and torpedoes are in, getting kind of weak. So that's what we got. Uh, we can go ahead and move this guy, go ahead and use a torpedo against him, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're going to move right here and uh, make use of our torpedo. We will teach them humility. There we go. All right. So let's go ahead and just keep on moving through here. Reach for the stars. And yeah, he should be far enough away. Yes, this shouldn't sir. be a threat. Uh, though, of course, we do have the threats here. Um, I should have moved actually a little bit closer here so I could have... Uh, I mean, we wouldn't be able to use this. I guess it's irrelevant. All right. So let's go ahead and fire on fire. these bombers here. Hey. Although we're not doing any damage to them. Ah, okay, that's fine. They're not lethal damage anyway. Alright, so we've moved the carrier. Let's take a look at what's next. Uh, the Fletcher Destroyer. Okay, we haven't used all of our... What can we use here? I'm not entirely sure why. Oh, because he can keep moving. That's right. So he could fire on him if he wanted to. I'm not entirely sure why... He does so well against him. Uh, it says right up there what he's getting here. Hmm. Yeah, because he would do he would do incredibly well against him. So yeah, I think we'll go ahead and do that. Might as well. Try and do a bit of damage to this destroyer here. All right. Yeah, significant damage to him. We'll go ahead and fire on him again. Okay. Excellent. So, who's next? Escort ships are the Got another destroyer here. And he has no ability to do anything, so... Oh, I clicked on the wrong one. These guys. Okay, so these guys up here in the north. Uh, let's go ahead and get... We need to identify what's there. Uh, let's take a look at the... What we could do is we can move right here. And it said it who was right there. Enemy ahead. Requesting fire support. All right, so we can now see the, the units there. And he doesn't have... Yeah, I don't know where the ships are going to be. 
Let's move right here. Oh, okay, hold up. There they are there. Okay, so what we want to do is identify these units. This is the, the one that's going to be invading over here. There's six, six, six total ships. So let's see what they got here, guys. Let's go like so. Watch out. It's anti-aircraft overwatch fire. It is oh. costly to attack the enemy positions. So they're going to fire on <laughs> that uh, seaplane that I put out there. Now, that doesn't, doesn't you know change anything up here as far as like... I don't know why it's not... Oh, because I'm already clicked on it. It doesn't change anything. Like It doesn't affect you. You, you can still use that. Um, the only thing it's really is it's costing you a little bit of prestige. Uh, so if we were to look at at that here uh for losing those float planes um just take a look here where is it the reconnaissance plane you lose uh yeah lose a little bit of prestige from from uh losing those so it does have its effect of course uh, but anyways we can see what they have here uh, this is what's important here's the six ships so they have a heavy cruiser and a battleship and a destroyer oh lord and then the three transports and we have two destroyers. Are the glue that holds awesome. The Navy together. So, <laughs> we can't engage them. That would be silly. Uh, a battleship and heavy cruiser? No. So we're gonna run and then go around and then try and, if you notice, they're leading the way while the uh, convoys are in the back. Uh, so we're gonna try and go around. I think that'd be the best way to do this. And then we can always fire on these guys. Um, yeah, let's fire on him. Get rid of that anti-air that's right there. It's harder to hit the heavy infantry anyway. Or excuse me, heavy, harder to hit the infantry because they're entrenched. Uh, so let's go ahead and bring this guy in as well. Evasive maneuvering is in order. And maybe we even get that destroyed. Oh, he fled. He's demoralized. All right, so we'll fire on him a little bit. Uh, as you saw, we didn't do any damage because he's entrenched. So you got to take down his entrenchment. All right, so. Hopefully they don't come over here and attack us. If they're smart, they would, but I'm claustrophobic, you know. they might just go ahead and keep pushing forward and go towards their objective and not be distracted by a couple destroyers. I suppose that would be Will smart, too. We also have submarines that can just dip right in, and they do have a destroyer, so we need to stay away from it and try and get those, uh, those troops sunk, man. Uh, once the troops are sunk, they're still a threat uh, because they can still destroy the guys here, and they can land marines to take, and they can take it if the, if the battleship has marines. Uh, let's take a look and see if he does barrage fire and fuel okay so it would be up here he has fuel tanks and fuel tanks so they do not have any marines so once these guys are sunk they can destroy the troops here but they can't take the objectives so really we just need to destroy those three guys and it's and it's a wrap uh, if even one of them survives then the the bigger ships here would be able to destroy the troops and that one unit would be enough to, to take those objectives we're also just about done with the episode guys i think what we'll do is we'll finish up this turn uh, and that's how we'll end it. So I was, I was shooting for an hour, Can but obviously it's a little bit longer than an hour. So, and we've got like nothing done. It just tell, it shows you how long this is going to be. Uh, it, it is what it is. All right, so the anti-air still hasn't fired yet. Can he fire on zero? He can. He can fire on the zero. Uh, so we might want to go ahead and do that. Just to get him taken out. Although he's so weak, though, it'd be really easy for a fighter to kill. Maybe we should instead fire on somebody up here. Like whoever we do the most damage to. Yeah, let's just fire on him. Unit has run out of ammunition. Oh, he's out of ammunition. Alright, well he should be getting supplied, right? You'd think? <laughs> Hopefully. I think he's within, yeah, he should be getting supplied from here. Uh, so, yeah, hopefully he'll get supplied this one. Sir? I don't know if we could hit him. No, we could not hit him. What is his range? Uh, remember we increased his range? Uh, his range is two, and so he gets three if he's firing towards an aircraft. So even if he was like up here on the coast, which I don't even know if he can go there, but even if he was, he still wouldn't be able to hit anything. So that was pretty much uh, pointless. That range didn't really help us at all. All right, it's what it is. So we'll be able to do anything with those guys. We won't be able to do anything with him. Any of our Marines, yeah, they can't do anything either. So pretty much it's just uh, planes. We've moved all of our ships. So let's get our planes fighting now. Uh, so the P-40 is ready and uh, we are not going to use them to fight the fighter. Let's use one of our own planes, one of our core uh, units here, to take out that fighter. That would be the best way to do this here. Yeah, let's go ahead and have this wildcat take him out. I think that's the only fighter out of all these planes. These are all bombers. 
It's on the and ground. he's dead. Excellent. All right. Uh, uh, so let's go ahead and start uh, taking out the the bombers. I want to make sure. Yeah, we have done all of our anti-air. So yeah, now we're going to want to take out the bombers. Um, let's start with the one that's right above our battleship. I think. <laughs> I think that'd be the best way to, to do this. We had been yeah. pilots before we were. What we might want to do is have We've one of these guys take the brunt of it of the attack. <laughs> and then bring our guy to get the kill. Better to die than to live and not fly. Which is uh, right we here. Have trouble hearing your orders at this altitude. All right, so take him out. Do it, boys. And you want to get the kills, guys, because there's got to be a carrier somewhere. I assume that they came off a carrier somewhere, and so they can go back home and repair a lot of that damage. And so any of the non-lethal damage that was done. So we do want to like get the kill and knock him out. Uh, so that's been done. Let's go ahead. I really feel like the torpedo bombers are the greatest threat right now. I mean, this you know obviously this situation isn't great either, but let's let's focus on torpedo bombers, guys. Uh, so, and, th and that's what we'll use them for. So we have the dive bombers over here. Torpedo bomber there, torpedo bomber there, but I want the torpedo bombers that are here taken out first. We might be able to kill that guy, so that's what we'll use them for. We had been pilots before I don't know if they have any more fighters. As of right now, there would be nothing to suggest that they have any more fighters. Our have we moved this guy yet? Yeah, we have moved him. Alright. <laughs> Here's them over here. Our love. That was a lot of movement. I probably should have moved him just right there. There we go. We did destroy him. Excellent. All right, so that worked out well. And so now it's just a matter of using the bombers, which we won't be able to escort them because we used all our fighters. But I don't know if they have any more fighters. It might not be a threat. Yeah, maybe not. Uh, so let's go ahead and get all of the, uh, the bombers out there fighting. And actually, we still have a wildcat here that I haven't, haven't moved yet. Uh, so yeah, we're going to want him to go out here and uh, get into the battle. Uh, again, probably just over here to take out uh, torpedo bombers, uh, which pose a threat Consumers to our planes. Already there. This is hell. As in hell he didn't do too well against him, or at least not in the uh, estimate. All right. So the fighters have all attacked, and now it's just a matter of we using the bombers to. And why can he not move more? Is he like locked down by these two so he can't do anything? Oh man, I wasn't aware of that. Well that kinda sucks. No ammo, sir. Enemy plane yeah, because now we can't uh we can't bomb with him. <laughs> Shit. Alright, yeah, that sucks. Um Alright, well we can use the rest of them then. So we're gonna want to make use of one of the dauntlesses that are not ours. You can see the world to... in the skies. He has the tactical retreat. And he has the all weather. Uh, we're going to want to use one of our tactical bombers on the on the fighters, or excuse me, the destroyers. All right, so he's close into here, so might as well use him here. we got to get these destroyers taken out. There's also this destroyer here. Uh, so let's use a... Go out through the anti-air here. Bombs. So he won't be able to... Uh, and then remember, he can move pretty far away as well. Uh, no hurry at all. Just all right, so significant damage to him. Uh, anti-air is completely useless. Torpedoes are still usable though. All right, uh, so let's go ahead and we're just going to aircraft here, so we only see the aircraft that we have. Uh, so the Dauntless. Remember, we don't want to use torpedo bombers the against them. Calling. They're not very effective against uh, destroyers. It sucks that they have so many destroyers. All right, so this guy would be going. He's got to go all the way around them, so that's why he can't get to them. So it's a matter of. Uh, Sinking, or, or just one. It's just there's only one that we can attack. All right, we'll attack him. Let's attack him with the anti-air again, just so they can't uh, fire back on us once we leave here. All right. Our planes are the best. Do a little bit of damage to him, and yeah, he's not looking too good. His engine's really low too. He's probably not going to be able to move too far. His defense is going to be really low as well. Uh, that is all of the dive bombers that are not ours. We still have our own Dauntless, though. And again, he can't reach here because of the, the nature of this conflict here and him having to go all the way around it. Um, but what we can do is go ahead and bomb him, and he, I don't think, has the ability to fire back. So this is going to be a nice, easy attack here with our main, main bomber. So I think main gun? I mean, torpedo tube is useful for sure. 
Um, but you know what? We're going to use it on that. Yeah, the main gun. There we go. Yeah, that looks nice. I can't see here, but yeah, we're going to move him out of here. Let's not exceed our range. Let's take a look and see how he's looking. Yeah, he's in the point where he might not even be able to fire at all because his main gun is so damaged. All right, uh, so B-26, yeah, I just can't, unfortunately can't get out of there. Uh, the Avenger uh, also can't do much. The bomb here, but again, torpedoes aren't extremely effective here. Uh, well, you know what? Actually, we could drop a torpedo right here on this guy, I think. I think he can do it from next to him. So we could hit him with a torpedo, so that's exactly what we're going to do with him. This is our Avenger. We'll get there in no time. Time, we'll take him out. The there we bombs. go. Excellent. And then just move. We'll try and get no away time. from him a little bit. Not that that's going to matter. He doesn't have any anti-air anyways. So it's pretty irrelevant. Alright. So, again, just try and move where we can. And he we'll can move here. No time. Let's try and take these guys, guys out. Yeah. And now it's time for lunch. Let's not exceed our range. We'll go ahead and save our movement, though he might get shot because of that. But that's you can okay. see the world's harmony. All right, and then here, um, we want to take out the ones that are closest to landing. Though there's a destroyer right there, so what we'll do? In God we trust. Let's go over there, we bring and we'll take him out. Wings. Yeah, it was a nice run. And then try and get him no away time. from those destroyers. All right, so that's everybody with V-26, and he can't move, unfortunately. So that is actually going to be the end of the episode, guys. A little bit longer than I wanted to go, and still we barely got anything done. Just kind of gives you uh, an idea of how long this, this scenario is going to be. It's, it's fun, though. I love this game. Uh, you know, I love the Panzer uh, strategy. And with the, the naval focus and, you know, just the focus on the Pacific uh, here is just, uh, yeah, it's just really cool. Uh, I don't, I've never seen, I've never played a a uh, panzer general style game you know successor style game that took place in the pacific now there was a panzer general in the pacific i believe but yeah, i never played it um so yeah this is a, a new experience for me you know playing one of these style games with the the more naval focus uh really really cool really enjoying it so far i hope you guys are as well uh we'll be coming back next episode in the same uh battle here and again i think it's going to be like i don't know three or four more videos just to get through this scenario just because I, I think it's a, a very large scenario it's a big battle, guys. Uh, so hopefully things uh, continue to go well. So far, they've gone uh, pretty good, with the exception of me getting this guy stuck here. Uh, but not too bad. We knocked out all their fighters. Now it's just a matter of getting their bombers knocked out. But there's so many of them, they can just wreak absolute havoc on our ships uh, and our, our uh, troops here. So that's something to be concerned about. Guarding bigger and I, I think I used yeah, I used everybody, board, as far sir. as anti-air goes, that we could. As far as the, uh, the landing invasion here, I think we got this. Uh, they only have three destroyers to protect them, that's it. Uh, I think that's what the job of the, the, the Air Force was, and, and so if they can't do it, then I think they're pretty much done for. So I think we'll, we'll take this out um, successfully before the battleships even get here, maybe. Because uh, this is like maybe one turn. Yeah, maybe one, maybe two more turns. And we'll have the, the invasion done for. And I don't know if there's anything else out there, but I would expect that's it. So yeah, we'll probably destroy them before the battleships even get here, guys. Uh, so I, I don't know how far they are. Uh, what we're gonna need to do, we should probably take, in fact, should we should probably do this now. Better? Uh, or the very next episode, I mean. Take uh, this submarine out. We could also take this one out as well. Uh, and did I get, oh, yeah, I guess I did get task force from huh? Oh, he's getting the task force bonus from somebody else, maybe from this guy, or one of the one of the damn ships out there. But anyways, the point is, uh, we're gonna want to take one of those submarines to go scout, or we could just use our uh, our float plane as well to try and figure out, um, you know, our reconnaissance plane. Try and figure out where the hell those battleships are at. Uh, we need to know their location. That's pretty imperative. All right, so that's gonna be it for this one. Uh, if you enjoyed the video, make sure you leave a like on it, subscribe to our channel, hit that notification bell, and leave a comment do read and reply to all comments. If you're looking for any links, look down in the description of any of our videos. Find links to our PayPal and Patreon if you'd like to support the channel, to our Twitter and Facebook and all our social media if you'd like to follow us on there, as well as to our Discord channel if you'd like to join our community. Now, if you're looking for anything else to watch while you wait for the next episode, since these probably, you know, they might not be daily episodes since they are so damn long. Uh, if you're looking for anything to watch, go check out that front page of our channel. 
I do have 2,000 something videos all sorted by Jana. That's a lot of strategy as well. So should be able to find something that you'd enjoy watching. Uh, hope to see you on that next episode, which will be on Tuesday, I think. Yeah, because obviously I got to work tomorrow uh, all day and all night. Uh, so yeah, next episode will be on Tuesday. Hope to see you on that one. And thanks for watching, guys.